All right, so Ron Goodall, FightHype.com. I'm here with Robert Merriweather III out here in Norfolk. He's going to be fighting on a top-ranked card on Friday, and it's going to be like 10,000 people, Keyshawn, keep, you know, screaming out. I know, I know you sold some tickets on there as well, so, so <laughs> we, we'll have to give you some credit. But um, how excited to be back in the ring and fight on a, on a big car like this? Man, uh, it's, man, this is like something I can dream of, you know, mm -hmm. just being able to get the opportunity to, to be able to showcase to the TV on and to the world. You know, I, I've been able to be on YouTube or boxing TV, but now it's like it's a, it's a mainstream media right now. So ESPN Plus, make sure y'all tune in to, uh, tonight at uh, 6 o'clock Eastern. You know, you've, you've fought on a lot of different cards. you fought on a pay-per-view card on PBC. You know, you've done, you know, like fights where, you know, the up-and-coming comes, mm -hmm. right? You know, um, you fought in Vegas. You fought um, on Pro Box. You fought. So, you, you know, you're filling around and doing things. How, how's the top rank experience been just kind of going through this? Um, Right now, this is, this is like a, this is a crazy experience for me especially being able to see the professionalism there is behind the scenes with Top Rank right now. So I was, I mean, they got me in, they flew me in and uh, got a, got a truck, got me to the, got me to the room and, you know, everything's here. So I'm able to move around and, and uh, you know, I'm, this is, this is very, you know, professional. You know, I'm, I'm just going to keep it at that because it's, 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 it's a nice scene to be able to be around this and, and you know, make sure I, I stamp my my uh, my legacy and, and make sure I keep my name going around in top ring so I can keep fighting. Here. What do you know about your opponent coming up to this fight? Uh, I mean, I've been watching some fights, you know. So he's he's gonna come to fight. I already know. I can I can tell, and uh, that, that's just his style. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna make sure that I box him and and make it an easy fight for me. And then make it a, a, a spectacular fight for me as well, and, and put a show on for uh, for the fans and for Top Rank. To make sure that they, they they see me. You know, in the state of Virginia, right? Because I think a lot of people, you know, they hear rehydration mm -hmm. clause, they assume that it's something that's been negotiated or contracted. Yeah. But in, in Virginia, it seems like they have a 10-pound rehydration yeah. for all fights, and so that you guys had to do not just a, a normal weigh-in. But you guys had to do a weigh-in early around 8:30 in the morning on yeah. the dot. So, what was that experience like? Just doing a, a next day rehydration. Uh, for me, it's different. I never, I never had that before. Never done it before. But I will say it was kind of like the amateurs. Mm -hmm. Like today, we we came in and everybody literally got on the scale and then we all left. So it was literally just like the amateurs. Like we weighing on the same day and that fight that same night. So it's a little different. But uh, I mean. At the end of the day, I'm, I'm a professional, so I make sure I may wait and may wait both times, and I'm, I'm ready to fight now. You know, people have kind of gotten on tank about this rehydration mm -hmm. clause, or, or uh, you know, just simply off the fact that some people might feel it's warranted, it's yeah. necessary because of such a, a big size difference from some of the opponents. Yeah. But since you did that, I know you haven't fought yet, so you don't know necessarily how you feel on the fight, like on the fight itself, but do you feel like rehydration is kind of necessary to kind of kind of keep things a little bit closer or is it or uh, does it affect did you feel effective or i'm not going to say i feel effective because I, I really don't honestly i feel the same but i will say it does change change up your rehydration or how you do it or when to do stuff like i had to make i wanted to make sure that i made weight today so i might not have you know uh had the same food i would eat or drunk as much uh water or, or Pedialyte or anything like that before I weighed in today. So I wanted to make sure I made weight and, you know, now we now I made weight, now it's time to fight. Now it's time to show up. Do you think that, you know, I guess I'll go to the main event. Like, do you think that Gustavo Lemos, not saying he purposely did mm -hmm. it or not, right? But you can't prove the intentions, but does that benefit, would that would benefit you if you were able to come in at a bigger weight and I then mean, and the rehydrate still by the same rules because yeah. you made the weight. I mean, it's crazy that you say that because I was I've been thinking about that. Like, I don't know how they how they're doing it now because I didn't even see them in the room, so, so I don't so, know what so they're he, doing. So, granted, it was a fight for one thirty five. Yeah. So they negotiated, I think, to one forty six. So instead of ten pounds, he got eleven mm -hmm. pounds. I'm sure by for safety, right? Yeah. But um, he made actually under the one. 46, he made 144 point, I think, 
so for the rehydration? Correct. So technically, okay. if he still did the 10 pound ruling, he would have yeah. made that still. So he came in six pounds over and still made it under so, 10 so the next day. He came in at 41.4 and he, he just weighed in today at 44? Uh, yeah, I can give uh, specifically, he came at 144.6. So he technically made it under the. Uh, so honestly, I mean. I know Richardson Hitchens said that he he didn't come prepared, but I mean it 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 kind of seems like he came prepared. I, it looks it looks like a strategic plan on what he was doing. Mm -hmm. To be honest, I'm not gonna you're not gonna you're not gonna tell me that he did that he didn't do that on purpose. Well, I guess he also missed weight when he um, prior to the Hitchens fight. Yeah. He did a tune up and he missed about eight pounds. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you think that. That was supposed to be a, a tune-up, I think. Nah, he did. Yeah. <laughs> He's doing it on purpose. <laughs> that's, that's no way it happens multiple times. And on top of that, like, I would I would have thought they would have been a uh, rehydration for, like, 150, uh, 151, because he came in at 141. So I was thinking Keyshawn was going to be able to get 16 pounds. But when you say he, he did 146, I mean, and make it, he made it that he time. Made it and he ain't make it. And he ain't make the uh, 135. Yeah, it was it was definitely purposeful. He did that on purpose, and you know, I I mean, it's kind of like like Ryan Garcia. Had, he did he did it on purpose, and I mean, it's just a, a strategy. We're gonna see if it's gonna work, but I don't really think it's gonna work, to be honest. But uh, we'll, we'll see. Now, um, you, you spar Keyshawn, mm -hmm. spar Tank. You ain't got to necessarily pick, but they've, they've been barking back and forth yeah. a little bit. I mean, how do you see that fight? I mean, that's, a t that's going to be a tough fight, honestly. Right now, I'm not going to say right now, but I feel like uh, Keyshawn would definitely be one of one of Tank's best opponents yeah. of all time. Like, right now, I, what, what are we going to say, Ryan Garcia? You know, so, you know, I got Tank pound for pound number one right now, but Keyshawn is, is, a, is a tough fight, especially I sp I've been in the ring with him, so I know that he's he's tough and he's going he's gonna to bring it. So, like... I feel like he's he's better than a Frank Martin, or he's better than um, even Pitbull Cruz. I feel like he's 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 him right now. So he he got the he got the uh, he, and he's big. He's a bigger fighter too. So we're gonna see what what that can what that can do. But I mean, that'd be a tough a tough fight for Tank to take. But uh, and there's no it's no reason for Tank to take that fight right now either. You know, Tank uh, Keyshawn's not a champ right now, and he's not really bringing the crowd like 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 a Tank would, or uh, you know, and he's he's bigger, so you know he's he's gonna have he got the reasons not to not to fight him right now. But if Keyshawn keeps you know keeps pushing and 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 keeps getting his fan base up like he is right now, I mean. He he can have that shot someday. I mean, you spar Shakur and Davin and things like that. They're they're viewed as like defensively sound yeah. when they you know need to. And um, you know we've seen Devin turn up and kind of press the action. Yeah. You know he likes to do it. He did it with Lars. He did it with Ryan. You know mm -hmm. didn't work in his favorite pockets. I mean um, you know and Shakur you know you see glimpses of him trying to go, but yeah. you know, a lot of people are going to be slick defensive fighters when they kind of. When he need to, mm -hmm. so Keyshawn likes to fight. Yeah. So granted, everyone has their great assets. I mean, a lot of people maybe said like with Shakur and Devin, they may not have the, the fire power, but they may mm -hmm. have like the defensive paralysis. I wouldn't know because I haven't been there. Yeah. They might obviously have the pop. Everyone has pop. Mm -hmm. But does Keyshawn bring? I guess what some fans kind of looked at is like fire to fire. Like Keyshawn likes to uh. fight. Can he kind of be able to actually put some pressure? Yeah. put some sweat on. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but at the end of the day, me, by the way, like, correct me on all that stuff because that's what people. Nah, I mean, like, you're right. You, you, are. You're right because they're defensive fighters. I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't really say Devin is anymore like he used to be. Mm -hmm. It's just more of like ever since everybody been talking about him, calling him pillow hands and all that. Now he wants to bring the fight. Like he's he's been like that for for the past couple fights now. Really like just long, long, long Lenar is too. I yeah. think that's what I think that's where I really kind of seen it start, where he wanted to press the action, and and and. and but I was like, Keyshawn, uh, I don't. He's gonna bring the fight. Like compared to Devin and compared to Shakur, he's gonna bring the fight compared to those two. It's, I will say 
Devin might be two and Shakur is three because I think out of those three fighters, the smartest fighter would be Shakur as far as knowing what he has to do to win. He's gonna he's a winner, so we gotta give him the, the benefit of the doubt. He knows how to win. And he's gonna make sure that all twelve rounds he's gonna be moving. You know what I'm saying? He's not gonna take an unnecessary shot or take a, a, a unnecessary risk for no reason. You know, but I feel like Devin and Shakur I mean Devin and uh and, uh Keyshawn will. They're gonna take that 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 because they feel like that uh that tank they probably they probably gonna feel like tank is not how people like the media uh, uh shows him to be you know and i feel like um and they and they both saw a tank too yeah so, they, so exactly so and that's another thing too bad. they all, got well, actually all they, of them they have like, yeah and, and that's another thing too they go on the the videos and stuff the lead up to the to the fight mm -hmm. especially how they just posted the devin and, and uh uh devin and tank, and tank spawn you know, if Devin was to fight Tank, they're gonna post it again, and that's gonna get in. They might get into that into their head. So I will say, Keyshawn is gonna bring the fight, that fighting that little dog, a little bit more than Shakur and Devin, because Devin, or not Devin, but you know, Shakur is a defensive first fighter, and Devin is is a defensive first fighter as well. But he's still gonna bring the fight a little bit more than Shakur. So I will say, Keyshawn definitely is gonna be. A little, a little tougher for, do you, for Tank. Do you see Tank having to put on his boxing skills? Because we've seen Tank box with yeah. like her arm against Pitbull, mm -hmm. and, but we also, you know, fight big guys like Ryan and yeah. Rollies in box. But then we also seen him put the high guard and put the pressure on like Frank. Mm -hmm. You know, you know what time it is. He had a high guard. And actually, with Mario, he boxed mm -hmm. and then put the pressure yeah. on. So with with Keyshawn, that's you think that's a, a boxing match or? With Keyshawn, I feel like Keyshawn's gonna. He's gonna use his size to his advantage. Like he's gonna be able to, he's gonna jab him. You know, he's gonna make sure he keeps him at the end of his punches. But I just feel like with with Keyshawn, Tank's not going. I feel like Tank might box in the beginning because he takes he he always everybody always knows he takes he takes the first couple rounds off. And that's another thing that Keyshawn's gonna gonna come in with the mindset of knowing that he ha he's gonna go up a couple rounds. He gonna make sure that he stays up those rounds. Mm -hmm. So I feel like Tank gonna come out box. Uh, Tank gonna come out boxing, not really throwing his, letting his hands go. But then when it's time to when it's time to put the uh, foot on the pedal, I feel like he might he might start you know pressing the action, mm -hmm. and we'll see if uh, how Keyshawn gonna take the the pressure. Now going back to you, right? Granted, you grew up in the TMT gym. You know you've been around. You know, I mean, I think you and Cormel have sparred a million times, I mean, from kids to even adults now. Um, so there's like a new group of guys, you know, you, Cormel, Abdul, and Mason, and there's a lot of new changing. So where do you see yourself? Do you see yourself potentially coming across some guys? Is there certain champions that you want around your division? Like, what is what is there that the fight fans need to know about you once there's the new change in the guard? The next I mean, I feel like we definitely all, all upcoming like me, Kermel, uh Abdullah Mason, um, Emiliano Vargas, you know, we all upcoming right now. So uh, I know that we probably all gonna become champions, but we're gonna have to cross that path one day. So uh, I feel like I feel like we all we up there for sure. But I feel like I'm up there with them. So, you know, they, they get they got the uh, publicity and they, they get a lot of shine. So um, I know that I deserve to be up there with them, you know. So, um, you know, there and there's some champions right now. I mean, that you know, some days, real soon, hopefully, you know, a year, maybe two, I get to I get to experience that that uh, world championship fight. You know, they got the uh, Neverettes and Oshaki Foster and uh, Lamar Roach. He's still he's a he's still a champion at 130, and. Um, uh, the dude, he just beat uh, Joe Cordina. Like I can't think of his name, but yeah, all the all four of those champions at 130. I want to be able to give it, get a shot at those, and then whenever I go to 135. But right now I'm at 130. That's my that's my goal set at 130 to become undisputed at 130. So you know, uh, we'll see. Awesome. Before I let you go, um, for the fight fans that's going to be tuning in today um, on ESPN. You know, in Norfolk, like I said, it's going to be a packed house. You've been on pay-per-view cars. You've been traveling around the world. 
you know, you've been around Floyd, and Floyd's had you on TMT card. Um, now you're on the top rank card. I mean, you're, you're everywhere. So what can you tell the fans before I let you go? Today, make sure y'all tune in ESPN Plus at 6 o'clock, 6.30. I'll be I'll be fighting my six round fight against Eric Howard. You know, uh, you know I've been all around. Just like you said, I've been all all around uh, boxing, to be honest. But I feel like, you know, I make my statement today. I make sure y'all y'all see me uh, put on a show and uh, and showcase my talent and my skills. And I'm gonna make a home here. You know, that's that's the whole, that's the end goal. This is not a uh, it's not a one and done. This is a one and and. and you know, pray for more. You know, that's all it is. This is an audition for me, so I'm gonna make sure that uh, I put I put my statement in, and they see me, and I'm able to, you know, be in the names of all the top prospects and and win prospect of the year next year. Appreciate it.